I would trigger the third. And look what's happening to his power gain. It is inverted now. It is absolutely 100% inverted. And there are fights where this is a real problem. Hey, welcome back to the channel. All right, it's finally time for my CCP review of America Chavez. I do need to remind you that she will be removed from my account in the very near future, but I am very excited to dive in to show you what she's all about. I have been able to play test her. There is a lot going on, kind of reading through her kit, it seemed very simple, but then as I started to play, I realized there's actually a good amount of nuance in playing her, maximizing her damage and her utility, and there's more than I think just initially presents through reading that. If you're enjoying the content, please make sure to hit like, subscribe, and even consider sharing it. I do always appreciate the support. All right, let's dive into this. We're gonna take a look at three fights here in 6.4 where there's a lot of buffs. I do think that's a niche where she should shine quite a bit. We're then gonna take a look at three more fights in 6.4.1 where we're showing how she uh, powers up, let's call it, based on how many buffs the defender has. And then we're gonna look at this really awesome solo she does. Uh, against the Axe 6.3.4 Hyperion, who I know is a real problem. And you're gonna see how easy she can make that fight. All right, cool. So I'm gonna do a lot of talking about how to play her and what is going on as we go through these fights. They ended up providing a lot of uh, great opportunities to discuss her. I think one of the things you want to start off knowing though, is she has these three parallel dimensions. You can see them in the upper left-hand corner. They're like a passive there and they get triggered, right, or activated, let's call them, by the heavy attack. If you finish off the heavy attack, you trigger what is called the negative zone. And you see how that was that purple one there in the upper left-hand corner. I wanna point out to you as we throw this heavy, how slow the heavy is. It's very slow and that was done deliberately because to trigger the other two dimensions, you need to interrupt that heavy after the hit, right? And you'll see the dimensions kind of light up. Watch them light up as I throw the heavy. You'll see that that's kind of your signal almost that you can trigger that dimension by throwing your special. So now we're up to our SP2. I should throw it after my first heavy, right? Because now I've triggered all three of the dimensions and you're gonna, we'll talk about that. That is triggering some really nice bonuses. In fact, that is a good time to kind of talk about this. This is a SIG 200 rank three champion. I'm not doing that to sell you this champion. I'll be really honest with my analysis on what, how good or not good I think she is. I'm doing that because I think she really needs it. I think she needs that SIG 200 to really access her damage. And I'll talk about why. I noticed a massive difference taking her from SIG 50 to SIG 200. And then I took her to rank three because I do think her damage is lacking. I really do. I, I, I just, I don't think there's a way to get around that. Her combos uh, hit pretty hard again though a lot of that is from triggering these dimensions and we'll talk about that and there's ways to kind of offset it but kind of keep an eye on this uh i think this is important keep an eye on the damage the heavy is doing now versus once we've started triggering all of our dimensions right so we have two triggered heimdall has three buffs at the moment four five and now look now we're hitting for eight thousand four thousand huge massive difference from when we started this fight now why do I think the SIG is so important? Uh, well, one, just having it activated, it's, it gives you this. If at least three unique dimensions are active, America Chavez becomes supercharged, granting the following bonuses. Launching a special two during a heavy attack, which is important because you can trigger these dimensions that way too. It will provide one stack of whichever dimension was activated, which is a really nice way, right? You can do those SP1, SP1, and then trigger that last one with the SP2, that last dimension. But here's what's important, or why it's so big to have it at SIG 200, is it will increase your dimensional energy infusion potency <laughs> uh, by 50%. All right, so what's the dimensional energy infusion potency? It is this, and it can have nine stacks for each unique parallel dimension on America Chavez, right? You can have three, as we just talked about, and each buff on the opponent you gain the following benefits. It maxes out at nine. So your opponent can have 44 buffs. You're only going to get credit for six of them once you have your three, uh, you know, unique parallel dimensions, right? Because it's going to stack to nine, but you're going to get plus 753 attack for each one. And then the SIG increases that by 50%. So that's like a thousand attack, a bit more in fact. 
This is a significant, significant amount. Then you also get basically 300 energy resistance for each stack and you increase that by 50%. So I think you're starting to understand why the SIG is such a big deal and why I was noticing such a massive difference going from SIG 50 to SIG 200. All right, now let's go into this fight against Groot. Uh, against Groot, I think this is the fight where I actually wanted to test the heal. Let's go ahead and talk about the SP2 a little bit. Uh, for the final three hits, there's five hits in the SP2. For the final three hits of the special attack, America Chavez opens another portal to the Big Bang dimensions, right? So a fourth dimension. And she deals a burst of energy damage equal to 50% of the damage hit. So you're going to see that those red numbers come along with it. If you throw the SP2 after the first hit of the heavy, you trigger the Utopian Parallel, which will deal 2,512 additional damage on hits. Not a ton, but that is kind of your damaging. That's kind of what you're going for there if you want to really maximize the damage. If you throw it after the third hit, uh, you get the, un it is unblockable. So you do the negative zone, which makes sense, right? You're gonna trigger the heavy and then you're gonna be unblockable. So you can throw the SP2. Or, and I do do this, I, I hope we didn't miss it already, we may have. You can throw it after the second hit, which will regenerate 12% of the hit damage dealt. Let's keep our eye on that and see if I do. I, I know it's in this video a couple times. I hope we didn't miss it. But here we go. So now we're fighting Groot. I think you understand why we want to have all of our dimensions uh, triggered. And you're seeing how much damage we can do when the defender has buffs. You see how much damage that heavy just did there too. The last thing to mention is this SP1. We are going to get a really, really nice power gain when we throw it based on however many of these dimensions we have at the time, right? For each unique one. So you can get up to three. And you're that's why you're seeing me able to just really move from SP1, 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 straight into SP2. Sometimes we have uh, get pushed all the way to the SP3 there because I am running Mystic Dispersion, which I like. And the SP3 is not a massive negative because it actually triggers one of each parallel dimension. All right. Here we go. So now we're going into uh, where there are no buffs. I hope you're following along. Uh, ask questions in the comments if you're not, and, and I'll do my best to continue to kind of explain more simply. I know there's a lot of terminology here, but here we go. So this is no buffs at all. This is about as weak as you're going to see here. And as I'm watching this, I'm pretty impressed with the numbers that she's uh, hitting here as we get going. So we've triggered that negative zone twice now. We've now triggered the, what is that? I think it's the utopian parallel. Uh, sorry, the dark dimension by throwing our SP1 after the second hit. We've now gone to the SP3. I should throw it after the first hit, which I did. So we'll see the red numbers. There we go. Not too bad, right? You want more. For a champion that feels like she's punching holes in the dimensions, right? That's what this character does. She punches so hard. She's creating holes into other dimensions. It really feels like she should be hitting harder than that. But hey, this is the champion we got uh, and here's what she can do. So again, there you go. Like that doesn't finish it off. I, I, I wish it did. I think it should. Um, this is a rank three SIG 200. I'm not, you know, running boosts or anything like that, but man, you know, uh, anyways, uh, less lamenting what we don't have. Let's kind of go over what we do. Hopefully, I hope she gets tuned up a little bit. I hope they take a look at it and see she's maybe not doing the damage they hoped and they, uh, they tweak that up there a little bit. I'd even be happy to sacrifice the amount she gets per buff on the opponent, uh, to get her better on baseline in a fight where the opponent only has one or two or three or zero buffs, right? I'd rather her be stronger from zero to five and lose a little bit on how strong she is from six to nine. So anyways, going into this fight against Venom the Duck, we've thrown our heavy, we let it finish off to trigger the dark dimension there or the negative zone. Uh, gonna go ahead and do it again here. I'm gonna use the SP1 to push us as close to the SP3 as possible with that that power gain, I do love a champion with a passive power gain. I'm gonna throw our SB2 after the first hit there for the big damage. And then the other thing I wanna point out, and you're gonna see this in the next fight against Vision, Vision Arcus, and then of course in the fight against Hyperion, is she actually stacks these, uh, these dimensions, they do stack, right? So you get to the point where you actually can't invert the, the defender's ability power gain, not their combat power gains, keep that in mind, 
but their ability power gain. And then with the Utopian parallel, which is the orange one in the upper left-hand corner, you can re reduce the opponent's uh, fury, armor, precision, and cruelty buff potency. I think that I'm hoping that there will continue to be nodes and defenders that come into the game that will allow her to really shine. Otherwise, I feel like this is unusual for them to have a whole kit based upon this. Um, so I, I hope and I feel like maybe there's gonna be more in the future where she really does get a chance to shine or they'll just be more like Mr. Mystic Ward nodes or defenders with those abilities where we can't use our nullify and things like that. All right, I did wanna show you this fight against Vision Arcus for a couple of reasons. One is remember she is gonna get an energy resistance with all of those uh, buffs from him and of course her own, uh, her own unique parallel dimensions. Additionally, she's gonna get the attack bonus that we've been talking about from all of the uh, the buffs that he's going to have. And then last, I really wanted to have one opportunity to show you this before we fight Hyperion, what the negative zone can do uh, in regard to his power gain, right? Because this is an ability power gain, not a combat uh, combat power gain. So I've triggered one negative zone. I really want to keep a mind, uh, an eye on this. I'm going to trigger a second one here, and I should really uh, trigger a third if I can. See, I don't remember if I'm able to get up to three. I think I am. I'm trying to get him to throw his SP1, because I'm not so good at uh, evading his SP2 at all. Here we go. I think I'm going to trigger a third one there. And I'm very okay. See, yeah, we triggered a third. And look what's happening to his power gain. It is inverted now. It is absolutely 100% inverted. And there are fights where this is a real problem. You really think about this, especially if you weren't able to nullify or get rid of that buff at all, if you're stuck with it. This is a big advantage. If this is her only niche, I hope it's not. I wish it wasn't. But if this is it, hey, at least she's really good at it. Getting pushed to the SP3 is not a big deal, right? We have been cycling SP1s, SP2s, throwing that. And here's why it's not a big deal. It's because it triggers one of each of her dimensions, right? And now we just need to work our way to the SP1, throw that, which as we know, is gonna start pushing us to our SP2. And additionally, if you get pushed to the SP3 on accident, it's probably because you have Mystic Dispersion and you're fighting the champion that has bust, meaning you're gonna get pushed to your SP2 quicker, throwing it there. And, uh, you know, that wasn't great, in fact, all right, so now we've got all this. I know I've thrown a lot of information at you, a lot of new terms, dimensions, big bangs, all these things. We're going to go into this fight against Hyperion. All right, here's what makes this guy tough. We've got this improved power gain and the supercharge. So this guy, Hyperion, this is Hyperion, literally supercharged. What can we do about it? Now, she has some really nice synergies, and we'll go over those here at the end. But she has a nice synergy with She-Hulk. I love using She-Hulk. All right, so we're gonna use these pre-fights from Mr. Fantastic. We're gonna reduce the effectiveness of uh, Hyperion's generation and power gain rates by 40%, right? I mean, this is a tough fight, so it's nice to be able to bring this in. And then we're gonna decrease his com uh, combat power rate by 25%. The combat power rate's really the big one because we're gonna be able to invert Hype's uh, power gain, right, from his ability regardless. But I wish there was something already in America Chavez's kit that would reduce combat power rates. I have some way to work with that because she is cycling these hits and these specials so much. But here we go. So uh, we've thrown the uh, the heavy. I let that fully go. We're going to do it twice now. Let's keep an eye on. There we go. We can see Hyperion's power gain. And we should be getting close to. Uh, there we go. You, you see it. It's It's creeping down. Right, remember he's supercharged here. So, uh, but it's working. We're gonna, I'm just gonna really concentrate on it as much as possible. And here's something to keep in mind. Just by throwing these heavies and working through this, uh, we've got him down to 64% health. And she's only 25 hits in. I think this was a bit of a mistake that I made in reading through her abilities. And it might be why her SP2 is not insane hitting. She's doing a lot of damage without it. She's getting the big attack increases from the SIG ability, from that uh, dimensional energy infusion, right? And then of course from Hype having these buffs. You see, I made a big mistake there. I made a mistake in gameplay and we're still gonna get the solo. And I think she makes this look easy. She's getting a lot of help from Mr. Fantastic. Not gonna deny that. But this is a fight where you need that help. And we never discredit someone for needing the white Magneto pre-fight. That's what Mr. Fantastic Four, he's also awesome in his own. So here we go. I'm going to throw the SP3. As we've talked about, it's going to trigger all of the dimensions. The SP3 is pretty cool. 
I'm happy with it. <laughs> they did a good job. Animation always kicks butt for uh, Kabam. Fantastic job here. All right, so I'm just gonna continue to concentrate on keeping up the, uh, the, <laughs> the negative zone to do what I can to invert his power gain. You're seeing it, right? What's happening. And, uh, and I know I wanted to finish him off with the SP, <laughs> but it didn't. And that's something for you to see, right? I think that's something for you to see. So I think that was impressive. I think there's a lot here in this kit. One of the things I really want to emphasize if I can is that the SP2 is not the end all be all. I do wish it hit harder. I wish it was more satisfying. Like I said, this is a champion that's supposed to punch holes into other dimensions. I think the SP2 hitting harder on its base would be uh, really fitting. I wish that there, she had a way to either have a taunt off the SP1 or a way to mitigate combat power to lessen it. Um, but as you've seen, there are fights where she works exceptionally well. I do not think this is the new latest and greatest best mystic in the game, best mystic in the game. I think her ceiling is probably super premium and a lot of that will be due to the defenders and nodes that are introduced into this game and that we start seeing in tough and difficult content, AQ, Alliance War, uh, you know, Act 7, and of course, any sort of version of Gaunt uh, Grandmaster's Gauntlet and things like that. I do think she's fun. She's better than I feared she wa uh, wasn't going to be. I was, I was actually pretty fearful after reading her abilities and doing the very initial testing. Uh, I do think she has some nice synergies. I don't think any of them have to be had. She has this nice synergy with uh, She-Hulk and Captain America, which will increase the Big Bang potency. Remember, the Big Bang was uh, uh, off of that SP2. And then she has this nice one with Mojo. And I think one of the important things to remember with Mojo is that Mojo also increases the power gain in general of champions on the team. Uh, it's supposed to reduce the unstoppable block duration by 50%. My understanding is that it might be bugged right now. Uh, and that's it, you know? And I think she works obviously very nicely with Mr. Fantastic. And if, if for those of you who really enjoy having She-Hulk on the team, you know that bringing along Mr. Fantastic, those two work really well together. And so those pre-fights from Mr. Fantastic can help mitigate some of what I think is lacking from America Chavez's kit. I really hope you enjoyed this. I know this was a lot of information to try to get out quickly uh, in, in a video, but I tried to do my best to showcase where I thought she would work and give you an accurate idea of what I think she is. Keep in mind, this was a rank three SIG 200 champion, but I went over why I did that. And it's not to try to sell you this, it is to try to show you, I think she really needs that SIG 200. I think if you pull the five star and you're America Chavez fan and you like what she brings to the table, it actually might be a really good thing because you're able to take her to SIG 200 a lot more easily than you would be the six star. Or if you're getting the six star and you're thinking about using the Awakening Gem or something like that, uh, keep in mind, keep in mind that this is gonna be a real long-term investment in the future, getting her SIG up. Enough for me. I uh, hope you guys did enjoy it. I really appreciate you watching. And of course, I'm always very interested in not only what did you think, what did you think of this format? Do you have any questions on her? I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, and what do you think of her? Do you think this is a quality addition? Do you think you, you would use her somewhere? Do you see other uses for her? Thank you so much for watching. Take care. I hope you either learned something, were entertained, or even better, a little bit of both. Don't forget to like, subscribe, Thanks so much for watching. Take care.